Good afternoon, our students and listeners at home. You are welcome to today's teaching online. My name is Uche Mokwe, your teacher from Chemistry Department, St. Charles College on Nature. The subject for today's lesson is chemistry, and the topic is ionic theory. Before we go into the lesson, let us look at the objectives. Students, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to differentiate between electrovalent and covalent bonds, conductors and non-conductors, electrolytes and non-electrolytes, weak and strong electrolytes, conductors and electrolytes, electrodes. Finally, you will be able to use Arrhenius ionic theory to explain the process of electrolysis. Before we go into the lesson, I would like us to define some terms. The first one is uh, electrovalent and covalent bonds. Electrovalent bonds, also known as ionic bonds, is a type of bond formed as a result of transfer of valency electron of a metal atom to the valency shell of a non-metal atom, so that each atom acquires a stable noble gas electronic configuration. Ionic bonds are the result of an electrostatic attraction between ions of opposite charge, for example, between sodium ion and chloride ion, that is, between cations and anions. Ionic bonds are very strong bonds, therefore, compounds containing these bonds have high melting and boiling points and are solid at room temperature. Let us use the formation of sodium chloride to explain electrovalent bonds. In the formation of sodium chloride, sodium atom is a metal. It loses its only valency electron to form a sodium cation, which has a stable neon structure. The loss of electron by sodium is known as oxidation. The chloride at chlorine atom with seven valency electron has set the only electron lost by sodium atom to complete its valency shell and form a chloride ion that has an argon structure. The process of gain of electron is known as reduction. The sodium ion now unites with chloride ion and forms sodium chloride. The sodium chloride is an electrovalent compound and the bond between the two ions is known as electrovalent bond. Covalent bond. In covalent bond formation, electrons are shared between the same or different elements such that each contributes to the shared pair of electrons in order to attain a noble gas structure. Such bond leads to the formation of stable molecules. Therefore, covalent compounds are gases or volatile liquid at room temperature. Example, chlorine molecule oxygen molecule, hydrogen molecule, and so on. Let us use the formation of hydrogen molecule to explain covalent bond. In the formation of hydrogen molecule, hydrogen atom has one valency electron. When two hydrogen atoms combine, each atom contributes one electron for sharing so that a pair of electron is shared between the two atomic nuclei in the molecule form. The bond that binds the hydrogen atoms together in a hydrogen molecule is called covalent bond. Let us look at the difference between covalent and electrovalent bonds. Covalent compounds are formed by mutual sharing of electrons. Electrovalent compounds are formed by complete transfer of electrons. Covalent bonds, co covalent compounds are made up of molecules. Electrovalent compounds consist of ions of opposite charges. Covalent compounds are gases of volatile liquid at room temperature. Electrovalent compounds are solid at room temperature. Covalent compounds have high melting and have low melting and boiling points. Electrovalent compounds have high melting and boiling point. Covalent 
compounds are soluble in, uh, in organic solvent but insoluble in polar solvent. Electrovalent compounds are soluble in polar solvents like water and insoluble in non-polar solvents. Covalent compounds are poor conductors of electricity. Electrovalent compounds are good conductors of electricity in molten state or in aqueous solution, but are insulators in solid state, meaning that electrovalent compounds can only conduct electricity when they are in solution. When they are in solid form, they are insulators. Another term I would like us to look at is conductors and non-conductors. Conductors are solid substances that allow electric current to pass through them. Examples of conductors include metals like copper, aluminium, zinc. Non-metals like graphite. Graphite is an allotrope of carbon. These elements conduct electricity because their atoms possess mobile electrons that move freely, therefore, are able to carry electric current along. Non-conductors are solid or liquid substances that do not allow electric current to pass through them. Example, are rubber, plastics, dry wood, benzene, non-metals like diamond, sulfur, and phosphorus. They are poor conductors because their atoms do not possess mobile electrons. Thus, no flow of electrons within their atoms. Let us now look at electrolytes and non-electrolytes. Electrolytes are compounds in molten or infused state and in aqueous solution conduct electric current and are decomposed during the process. Generally, Dilute mineral acid like hydrochloric acid, trioxonitrate 5 acid, tetrososulfasis acids, alkalis like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and even ionic salts like sodium chloride, magnesium triosocarbonate 4, copper 2, tetrososulfasis, are examples of electrolytes. These compounds produce ions when they are in molten state or in solution. Because of the ions, electrolytes are good conductors of electricity. We have two types of electrolytes, strong and weak electrolytes. Strong electrolytes are compounds that ionize completely or dissociate into ion in water. They produce ion easily when they are in solution. An example of strong electrolytes includes ionic compounds like sodium chloride, copper 2 tetrosulfases, potassium triosonitrate 5, strong acids like hydrochloric acid, trioxonitrate 5 acid. Weak electrolytes. They are compounds that dissociate slightly into ion in water. They produce few ions when dissolved in water. Example are weak acid like ethanoic acid, triosocarbonate 4 acid, weak bases like aqueous ammonia, lime water, and so on. In a solution of a weak electrolyte, there will be dissociated ion as well as neutral molecules of the substance. Therefore, current conducted by such solution is very low compared to that of a strong electrolytic solution non-electrolytes. They are compounds in molten or in solution do not allow electric current to pass through them. They are solutions of organic substances which produce molecules instead of ion. Therefore, they are poor conductors of electricity. They do not split into positive and negative ion in a solution and does not generate ion either. Example are eh? covalent solids, like sugar, ethanol, kerosene, petrol, and so on. My dear students, with, with these few definitions, I would like us now to differentiate between conductors and, non, and electrolytes. A conductor is a metal or graphite. 
electrolytes are ionic or polar compounds. Polar compounds are compounds that have two ends, one end positive, the other end negative. Conductors conduct electricity in solid state. Electrolytes conduct electricity when in molten or in solution. Conductors, in conductors, every current is carried by flow of electron. In electrolytes, current is carried by flow of ion. Conductors transmit heat by conduction. By conduction. Electrolytes transmit heat by convention. Conductors are not decomposed by electric current. Electrolytes are decomposed by the passage of electrodes. Electrodes are conductors in the form of wire, rod, or plates through which electric current enters or leaves the electrolytes. Electrode connects the wirings of the circuit to the electrolyte. There are two types of electrode, the anode and the cathode. The anode is the positive electrode. It is the electrode through which the electric current enters the electrolyte or by which electrons leaves the electrolyte. It is joined to the positive terminal of the electric supply. The cathode. The cathode is negative electrode. It is electrode. It is electrode through which electric current leaves the electrolyte or by which electron enters the electrolyte. It is the electrode which is joined to the negative terminal of the electric supply. My dear students, let us now look at ionic theory. The theory explains what actually happens during electrolysis. The theory was proposed by Arrhenius in 1887 to explain the process of electrolysis. According to him, when an electrolyte dissolves in water, it dissociates to give free mobile hydrated positive and negative ion. This process of dissociation is known as ionization. When electric current is passed through an electrolyte, the ions migrate to the electrode. The positive ion migrate to the cathode and are known as cations, meaning cathode ion where they gain electron to form neutral atom and is discharged. The negative ions, on the other hand, migrate to the anode and are called anions, meaning anode ion, where they lose electron to form a neutral atom and is discharged as well. My dear students and listeners at home, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I will give you an assignment. Take down. The, the question is differentiate between the following electrovalent and covalent bonds, electrolytes and non electrolytes, conductors and non conductors, conductors and electrolytes. Using Arrhenius ionic theory, explain the process of electrolysis. Finally, give reason why sodium chloride aqueous can conduct electricity while sodium chloride solid cannot. Submit your assignment to the following WhatsApp contact 080 36 27 1397. 080 36 27 one three. Thank you for listening.